Hello friends, welcome to jwreasoning.com. I'm recording this informal video for Sunday, June 30th, 2024, and it's for the Watchtower study entitled, How to Have More Joy in the Ministry. Now before I begin the video, I just want to say somebody made a comment. It's something that I said in the previous video, and I was mistaken, I was wrong in what I said. I said that the Jehovah's Witnesses weren't doing any ministry during the COVID scare, during that time of 2020 from March to whenever they began again. But it wasn't the ministry that they had stopped. It was public ministry, at least in my area and everywhere that I knew, they had put a stop to public ministry. And that was brought to my attention. I want to apologize if I've misinformed anyone. They were writing letters and doing ministry by telephone and things of that nature. But as far as going out into the public, when I say public ministry, I'm, it's public ministry when you write letters, but I mean going into the public and preaching or teaching, they were not doing that. They weren't doing face-to-face -face other than video conferencing. And the point that I was making is, if the word is that urgent, we don't allow what the government says to stop us from doing the preaching work. Like I said in the last video, the small fellowship that I'm involved in, we never stopped face-to-face, door-to-door, public ministry, doing things out in the open, doing things in front of people as far as ministry. We never stopped doing that. So it's what's important. Are we going to please men or the governments? Or are we going to do what the witnesses say we were commanded to do? They use Acts 20.20. 20. We should be going from door to door and from house to house. These are the texts that they use to try to say that this is what we should be doing. The point that I should have made was that they weren't doing any door to door or public ministry out in the open. They weren't going out into what they call field ministry. Everything was done behind closed doors, either by phone or on letter, by letter. So I just wanted to get that out of the way. Again, I appreciate people pointing that out to me. I think two people sent me a message and said, hey, you need to straighten that out. Uh, it's official. I've straightened it out. I'm going to own it if I say something that's wrong. And I did. I said it. I was wrong. And I want to apologize for that. But let's get to this article. We're just going to cover a few things. My schedule's really tight this week. That's why I'm doing this informal video. In this article, it's, again, it's entitled, How to Have More Joy in the Ministry. We're just going to skip right to paragraph 5. To get the most out of God's Word, we should avoid rushing through our reading, study, and meditation. Take your time. If you come across a scripture that you have trouble understanding, do not skip over it. First of all, let's stop there. That's excellent advice. Don't skip over it. It's unfortunate, though, when the Watchtower comes across the text that they have trouble with, they just remove it from the Bible. A good example of that is in the book of John. And, you know, there's several passages and places where they've just, they just get rid of it. Well, we don't want to have to deal with that. We don't want to have to deal with the woman that, that sinned and that they were going to stone to death. We don't, we'll just remove it instead of giving people the choice to make the decision. But either way, this is good advice where it says if you come across a scripture that you have trouble understanding, do not skip over it. Instead, instead of studying your Bible, use the Watchtower Publications Index or the Research Guide for Jehovah's Witnesses to find an explanation about the verse. Once again, this organization is so eat up with having to control your thoughts, they can't allow you to study the Bible and draw your own conclusion. They want to tell you what to believe, and if you don't believe what they believe, you must be quiet about it. You can ask a couple of times, but if you keep asking, you're going to end up out of the organization or marked or someone telling you that you can't associate with us anymore. It's really a shame. Instead of allowing God's Spirit to work on your heart and help you to understand things according to what the Bible says, you have to study the Watchtower publications and be indoctrinated with what they believe. It's really sad, friends. Next in paragraph 7. How might we prepare for the ministry? We need to give thought to how we can express the truth effectively in our own words. Really? In your own words? 
I don't know about today, but they used to give you word for word things of what to say. If someone says, then you can reply and they give you word to word presentations. They used to put that in the kingdom ministry, how to do it. They would say you can put it in your own words, but don't deviate too much. If you deviate too much, somebody's going to be counseling you. But back to the paragraph. It is also helpful to anticipate two or three common reactions from those in the territory and have in mind how we will respond in each case. Then when we approach people, we can try to relax, smile, and be friendly. It seems to me that just being familiar with your Bible and just knowing what you believe instead of trying to teach what an organization is telling you to believe, if you know what you believe and you've studied your Bible, when somebody asks you a question that's difficult, you don't have to anticipate how you're going to answer. You can simply say, oh, well, let's turn the Bible here and let's take a look. You know, I know it's in a different setting, a different context, but in Matthew chapter 10, 19 and 20, would this not apply? It says, but when they deliver you up, do not worry about how or what you should speak, for it will be given to you in that hour what you should speak. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father who speaks in you. As you can see, what the organization has done is they have removed the Spirit of God from helping us to be able to understand and comprehend. And what they do is they say, this is how you do it. You study our publications. We will give you the answers. But we're promised here that we don't have to worry about how we will answer. If we know what we believe, if we have a relationship with God and his son Jesus, God will send the spirit of his son into our hearts that we can cry, Abba, Father. To me, that means very clearly from the Bible that we can have the mind of Christ. We can not only cry, Abba, Father, but Christ will help us to understand things as we study. The organization removes any opportunity for this to happen by replacing Christ and by replacing the Spirit of God with themselves. Next in paragraph 9. At times we may experience fear of man or fear of rejection. Let's stop there. This is the whole premise of, by which the organization operates. They instill in you fear of man. Which men? The elders, the governing body, anybody in authority in the organization. And what does it say? We may experience fear of man or fear of rejection. This is another reason why many of you continue to go to the Kingdom Hall and continue to go to the meetings even though you are awake to the many problems within the organization. It's because you are afraid that you will be rejected by your family and your loved ones and your friends. This is the problem. So what they're doing here is they're making it sound like, oh, well, you, you don't have to fear rejection. But with the organization, you do. You do with the organization. But let's get back to the paragraph. At times, we may experience fear of man or fear of rejection. How can we overcome that challenge? Consider the prayer of the apostles when they were ordered not to preach. Rather than give in to fear, they asked Jehovah to help them to keep speaking his word with all boldness. Jehovah immediately answered their prayers. If fear of man affects us sometimes, we too should pray for Jehovah's help. Ask Jehovah to help you conquer your fear of man with your love for people. Yes, allow God to help you to overcome your fear of the organization. Have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. There's no way to the Father except through him. But the organization has taken you and brought you up away from a lot of family members that aren't witnesses and has replaced them with this family of witnesses where your love is conditional. Their love for you is conditional upon what you believe. This causes fear of man. This causes fear of rejection. Notice too in this paragraph what we read, consider the prayer of the apostles when they were ordered not to preach. Now think about it. They couldn't do phone witnessing back in those days. Their preaching either had to be through a letter writing campaign or through preaching right in front of people. And we know from the record that they preached, they went out and preached in spite of what the authorities told them to do. And so this is where the organization, once again, is toting the government line. They're following the very ones that they like to call the wild beast. 
They were following along with what the rest of the nations were doing. And really, if we have this message that's so important, which I believe the message of the gospel of the return of Jesus, having hearts prepared for him to come back, is extremely important. There's nothing more important. But to the organization, you see, they're afraid of persecution. The governing body does not want to be persecuted. They don't mind if you're persecuted, but they couldn't hack it. They wouldn't. They will always be locked up there in that compound as long as they can. Next, in paragraph 14, we can also rejoice when another publisher finds an interested person in the territory. The Watchtower has likened our work to searching for a lost child. So here again, they're quoting the Watchtower as if it's someone. But really, again, it goes back to last week's lesson about the organization. They quote the Watchtower like it's scripture. The Watchtower has likened our work to searching for a lost child. Who cares what the Watchtower says? It really doesn't matter. It's what God's Word says. Paragraph 15. We can increase our enthusiasm for the preaching work by focusing on our love for Jehovah and for our neighbor. Just imagine how happy Jehovah is when he sees us do the work and how happy people will be when they start studying the Bible. You know, I agree that if we do the work God has given us to do as Christians and preach the gospel, and people start studying the Bible, it will help them. The problem is, again, Jehovah's Witnesses do not study the Bible. They study their Watchtower publications. They do not have Bible studies with people. They open up their publications, and that's where they lead them. A great example of this is found right in the very illustrations that they use. This one illustration shows this sister. She's sitting there with her Bible laying on the table, but she's looking at the publication. And the other one, here when she's at the door and she's talking to this person, she's not leading the person to the Bible. She's leading them to the publication. So once again, we can see that it's all about the organization, reading the publications and not the Bible. If you just had a Bible study with a Jehovah's Witness, if you said, Lo, don't use the publications, just use the Bible, they would not know where to start. They wouldn't know how to lead. They don't know how to lead a Bible study. They know how to take you through a publication and read to you questions and answers from the organization. But to actually go through and start in Genesis and lay a foundation and then move from Genesis to Exodus or, or even from Genesis to the Gospels, the brothers and sisters in the organization, unfortunately, don't know how to do that. They wouldn't know where to start and they don't know how to allow the Bible to speak for itself or to answer the difficult questions. And this is why they're telling you, Go to JW.org. Go to the Watchtower. Come to us for the answers. But the answers are in the Bible, friends. The answers are there. Next in that paragraph, it says, Think, too, about the salvation that awaits those who respond to our message. You notice it's not Jesus' message. It's not God's message. It's our message. It's really amazing to me how they put themselves in the place of Christ. Jesus is the one who has the message. Again, he is the way, the truth, and the life. You're going to hear me say that week after week because we've been duped as Jehovah's Witnesses into believing that the organization is the truth. But the Bible is clear. Jesus is the truth. Paragraph 16. Are you confined to your home for some reason? If so, focus on what you can do to show love for Jehovah and your neighbor. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Samuel and Daniel were confined to their home. Throughout that difficult time, they regularly did telephone witnessing, wrote letters, and conducted Bible studies over Zoom. Again, it wasn't Bible studies. And this goes back to the mistake that I made last week. They were witnessing. The, the, a lot of the friends were witnessing, but they weren't doing face-to-face -face witnessing publicly. They weren't going out into the public and witnessing. And really, that's the best way to develop a relationship and develop a friendship is in public, even going out into the streets rather than from door to door. Sometimes people feel a little threatened when you come to their door. But if you just go out and you stand and you say, hey, I'd like to share this message with you, they don't even engage you when you walk by. It's really sad. If the message is that important, friends, let's engage people. We need to get out there and get the work done. Friends, these are just a few points that I picked up. There's a lot more in this article. I just hope you will continue to study your Bible. When you read these articles, look at what the words are saying. 
read them carefully and you'll see that you're being moved away from Jesus. You're being moved more even away from God. And they're replacing the Father and His Son with the organization. They tend to do that more with Jesus because they're putting the governing body in that place. Please remember that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. Also, keep in mind that there's no other name given among men by which we must be saved, and that's the name Jesus Christ. So please, friends, keep studying your Bible, keep reading it on a daily basis, and my prayer for you is that Jehovah will continue to bless you until we meet again. Music